Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with another Ruby programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be introducing something kind of new called methods. Now, a method is essentially a block of code that you can reference from other methods or other places in your program. So it essentially allows you to reuse a chunk of code more than once. So up until now, we've basically been writing some code uh, in order just in our file. So for instance, I would write a equals 1, and I could say b equals a plus 2, or something like that, you know. Um, and that is all being written just in the main part of the program. But we can also write code inside of a method. So let me go ahead and give you an example of this. So for instance, to define a method, we just type def space, then a name. Uh, I'll just call it my first method. Um, then a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis. And then on the next line we'll put an end and between these two lines we put some code for our method. So for now I'll just have one line of code and I'll make it puts hello method world. Um, now if I save this and if I run it just in terminal nothing will happen. And that's because this put s line that we've put here isn't inside of our main method, it's inside of this uh, enclosed method that we've called my first method. Now, if we put code outside of this, like this is my second puts and starting program at the beginning, you can see that since this is the method and these are both outside of the method, they will run fine. Um, but this puts line inside of the method won't run unless we do something called calling the method. So I'm going to get rid of this here so it's less confusing. And we'll just define our method at the top. And I'll have this is my second put s. And now under this, we'll call my first method. Now, calling a method is just like activating the code in the method. So if I wanted to call my first method, all it would do is go and run all the code starting from here going down to before the end and after it's done calling the method it'll go back to the next line after I call the method so just to give you an example if I write my first method here that will call the method and then under here I can put continuing main code um, and what this will do is essentially Ruby will run this it'll see oh here's a method declaration we're not going to run this because it's inside of a method but then it's outside of the method, so it sees this put s, and it runs it. Then it sees this, and this is just the way you call a method, is just to write the method name there. So Ruby will now see this. It'll jump back up to the contents of this method, run everything up until the end. When it gets to the end, it'll jump back down to the next line after we called this, back down here. Um, so if you can't imagine what this will look like, if I just go ahead and run it, you can see it ran the first put s. This is my second put s. Then it runs hello method world, which is inside of our method. And then it says continuing main code, which is right here. And we can actually put multiple lines of code in here. We can have another like hello method world, goodbye method world. Um, and if we run this now, you can see that inside of the method code runs in order as well. Um, but after that code's done running, it jumps back to where we were. So that's basically what you can do with methods if you don't return a value or take an argument. Um, so what I mean by this is, just like a function in math usually will take uh, a number and then give out another number, you can do a similar thing with a method in Ruby. So I'm going to keep this method here, but I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it increment. Um, and now, because I want this method to take a parameter, or an argument, I'll, I'll type the argument name in between these parentheses. And I'll just call the argument x. Uh, and I'll still have my end here. And what I want to do is I want to have this, this method here act like a mathematical function where it'll take a number x and it'll return or output that number plus 1. And all we have to do to do this in Ruby is to just in the method, our last line is the value that the method outputs. So if we just type x plus 1, then 
anytime you call increment with a given value, it'll just return that value plus one. So for instance, if I have here puts this is one plus one, and then inside of here, I have some piece of code um, or a variable name. So I'll just make a variable a equals increment one. And so now a should have two. And I'll just print out the value of a here. And if I run this, it'll say one plus one is two, basically. Um, so if you're not understanding the syntax, basically all Ruby does when, when it sees increment left parenthesis one right parenthesis is it jumps to this code right here. And whenever it sees an X, it substitutes for that X, whatever the user put inside of these parentheses. So here X becomes one uh, in this case because we've called it with a value of one. If I say 10, I'm just gonna change this to 10 to keep consistent. It'll output 11. Um, and likewise, we can use our other operators. I can have X times two um, and it'll become 20. Um, you know, you can really do anything with this. So this is essentially how to use a method to take an input and return an output. Now you can actually put multiple lines of code in a method, even if you only want to return one value. So for instance, here I can have put s like inside increment function incrementing and I'll print out the value of x. And then I'll change it back to being an increment function. Um, and what Ruby will do when this is called is, it'll run this put s line, and then it'll return the value that the second line returns. Um, because the return value of a method is always gonna be the return value of the last line in the method. Uh, that's just how they designed Ruby. So if I go ahead and save this now, and I run it, you can see this extra put s here inside incrementing function incrementing 10 um, and that's because I passed 10 in here and I can actually run this method a whole bunch of times and just not assign the return value to any variable um, as you can see here so the return value of this is irrelevant it's getting thrown out it's the equivalent of typing like 12 there like nothing happens but in addition to that it's passing 11 into this method, which will cause it to print this out. So if we run this now, you can see that it says it's incrementing 10, it says it's incrementing 11, and it's incrementing 12, but we throw out these values, um, so it doesn't matter. Like this is equivalent to just assigning a variable that we never use to the uh, return value of this, of this method. Um, so you can call methods with return values and not use the return value at all, as I've just shown you. Um, but, I mean, usually you won't want to do that. Uh, most of the time the return value of a method is actually useful. Um, but that's just an important thing to note. One last thing is that you can actually have multiple arguments to a method. Uh, and the syntax for this is um, pretty straightforward. So let me just go ahead and define a new method called combine. And we'll have this method add two numbers together. And I'll have it take an A and a B. And those are the two arguments that it takes. So whereas this one just takes X, this will take an A and a B. Um, and I can put end down here. And inside of my method body, I can just return A plus B, just like that. And now if I have, let's just say I have A equals combine, 10 and 12, A should now become 22 right here. Now, another important thing to note is that variable names in the main part of your code don't um, correspond to variable names inside of a method. So this is something that probably gets people a little confused. Um, so if I pass 10 in for here, whenever in this, in this method I reference A, the equivalent value is gonna be 10. And in my main code, or in another method where I call uh, this method, I can have a variable a that's something else, and it's just completely unrelated. So this a and this b are basically just used for substitution placeholders. They're not the same as variables that I put out here. 
Um, just like you would never want to assign inside of a method. You wouldn't say a equals 10. Like That's just a malpractice because you want a to be substituted with the value that you pass into the method. But anyway, right here in my main function, I can say a equals combine 10 and 12. And I'll say 10 plus 12 equals a. And if I run this now, it says 10 plus 12 equals 22, which is correct. So our combine method successfully does return a plus b. Um, so anyway, this was a basic introduction to methods in Ruby. Um, this is a hard topic to grasp at first, just the idea of substituting in and jumping around in your code, uh, going between places of execution. Um, so if you have any questions or um, hypothetical scenarios you'd like me to like tell you what would happen or you know how would you make this method or something like that, feel free to comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so thanks for watching MacHeads 101. Subscribe and goodbye.